All right, today I want to talk to you about making yourself ready, and in everything that we see in life, there's always preparation for things. And I think as we, as we look at, at through the Bible and how um, God had different people making preparation for what was coming, God also wants us to make preparation for that same thing, whether it be in the natural or it be in the supernatural, whether it be um, in these times that we're in where we got financial difficulties in the U.S. and that we see the downswing of the dollar real bad and we even believe that also there could be a, a 40% drop in the dollar in one day. We believe that there could be a really more storms ahead of us. Uh, I believe this. I believe that God wants to make us ready, whether it's for that or whether it's for His coming or our walk with him so he can take us on. And I want you to see that everything has preparation. And, and lots of times in our Christian walk, we, we make very little preparation for our next step in Christ, or we make very little preparation for the coming of Christ. And I really believe that that is a tactic of the devil, that he would stop you in this area of your life, in your, in your spiritual walk, that you would not make yourself ready and understand uh, the steps of the Lord and what God wants in your life. And as we go into Revelations chapter 3 and verse 19, we see something here. Jesus talks about, prior to that, he talks about lukewarmness. And he doesn't want us lukewarm. He wants us on fire. So when we understand what God wants in our life, he wants us really zealous for him or on fire for him or it's it, in our life that we're it's, it's about God. It's about God. When we're going to watch something on TV, we, we throw our, 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 our measuring stick in there of the Lord. Would the Lord want us to watch this? Is this okay to watch? Uh, when we conduct ourselves in our, in our life, we, we, we think about, okay, I understand God, and is this okay? And many times, uh, we uh, we will understand and we'll walk before God uh, righteously because we do understand the Lord. Now, verse 19, it, it says something here. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten and be zealous, therefore, and repent. Be zealous about God. Zealous about God is, is that you're on fire for God. You want to know what God wants, wants you to know. Uh, let me say that again. You want to know what God wants in your life. You want to know. And you want to know what God expects out of you. You want to know that. And once you know that, you're zealous to press towards God and say, God, God wants this in my life. He wants me to, to do this, or he wants me to do that, or this is the type of person he wants me to be. And I, and I press God with prayers all the time because this is what he wants me to be. This is what he wants me to do in my life. This is how he wants me to conduct my life. And I want to do that. And there is a drive inside you that wants to do that. Now, we know that each one of us do kind of stray off the path here and there in our lifetime. And this is why God says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. This, this is truly the truth. Many people are being chastened for the things that they're doing in their life, and they have no idea they're being chastened. They have no idea. They really believe it's the devil doing it, and, and they have no idea that it's actually God chasing them. It's actually God taking the belt and spanking their little behinds. He, they, they, they have no idea. They really want to blame God or blame, blame the devil or, or, or just say it's just circumstance. Uh, wait a minute. This is the chasing of the Lord. Well, God doesn't care about Yes, he does, and he's chastening you right now. This is why your life is tipped upside down. God's trying to get your attention. And a lot of people don't understand that. You, you would think back, how many times have I been chasing in my life? And if you can't name, if you can't name uh, uh, several times that you know, this is what God chasing me. He was chasing me because this is what I did and this is what God did about the whole thing. If you can't name areas in your life, then you don't understand the chasing of the Lord. You don't understand God. You got you to gotta understand God that, okay, certain, er, certain times in my life, I have been chastened because he says, everyone, everyone that the Lord loves, he chastens. Everyone he chastens. And, he, and rebukes just means that he, 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 he kind of scolded you about it. He kind of scolded you for doing this. And you go, I know, I know, I, I know that when God has done that. I know that when God has done that. Now you're tuned into God. 
A lot of people, a lot of people don't know that. They don't know that and they need to be taught that, hey, this is all this is is the chastening of the Lord. Why is this happening? Why one thing after another is happening in my life? Well, what are you doing in your life that God would constantly be chastening you? What are you doing? Okay? So as many as the Lord loves, he chastens. Thou hast gone down. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man would hear my voice and open the door, I will come to him and I will sup with him and I will be with him. Praise the Lord. I will be with him. I will come in and sit down and dine with him. I will come in and sit down and dine with him. You know, what do you do when, you, you, when, you, when, you, when you're uh, trying to um, be friends with somebody? Say, hey, let's go out and eat. Let's go out and get a bite to eat, don't you? Well, this is what Jesus said. He says, I knock at your door and say, invite me in, and I'd like to sit down and just have dinner with you. I'd just like to sit down and have a meal with you. And he says, to him that overcomes, I will grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And all this is, all this is, is a preparation for when Jesus comes to take you home. All this is, is a preparation for you to go on, go on with your walk with the Lord. I want to read here in Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 tells us something. In verse 1, he says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. He says, let us go on to perfection. What we're doing is we're perfecting our ways, but we're getting ready for something. We're getting ready for the next step. Not of the doctrines of baptism and laying on of hands. We already got that down. This will we do if God permit, for it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gifts and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away. God wants to get us to a place where we don't fall away. We keep going on. Let us go on with the Lord. There's steps, there's preparation, there's things that you got to do. It's kind of like you look at your whole life. What did you do when you first went to school? Well, most of us, we th- went to kindergarten. Then we went to first grade. Then we, we were ready for the next step. We went to second grade. And then we went to third grade. And that you see, it's all a step process. Then we went through high school. And then when we were done in high school, then we went to college and we decided how many steps should I make? What do I want to do in college? And, it, and that, that showed us how many steps, how many years we had to be in there, how many subjects we had to take, how many credit hours we had to have. It's all a process. So we see when we we come to God, it's the same thing. It's all a process. You start in first grade, you go to second grade, you go to third grade, and you're you're growing in God. But it's all preparation for the Lord to be working in your life. You stop, you stop in fourth grade, God stops working in your life in that area, and he only works on that level. And after a while, he says, listen, you're in fourth grade and you got whiskers. You got to go on, man. You got to go on. And so God encourages us that you need to go on because I want you to to graduate from grade school. I want you to graduate from high school. This is where you got to go. I want you to be a doctor in the faith, in encouraging my people. I want you to work in this area or in that area. And it's all about preparation. It's all about preparation. There's no such thing as walking in the body of Christ and not preparing yourself. I want to... I want to bring some things about here. We see that Noah, Noah made an ark. God told him what was coming, right? God told him what was coming, and he did what? He says, build an ark, build a big boat. And so he built a big boat, and he says, this will save your family. And not only that, I've got, I got other things I want to save. I've got other lives I want to save, and it just happened to be the animals, Okay. Those that can't help themselves, I want you to be able to help them. But I want you to prepare. And this is what Noah did. He prepared. Now, I want you to think about this. Prepared for 120 years, he prepared for that time that came when the rain started. He got all the animals in, and he shut the door, 
And everybody was laughing at him, but he prepared because God showed him what was coming. And God told him, this is what I want you to do, Noah. And so it rained for seven days, and after seven days, the ark started to float. I believe there's a time coming in the U.S. I believe there's a time coming in this world, and right now is a time to prepare. And I believe the thing to do is, be, the first thing to do is prepare spiritually before the Lord. What does that mean? That means as you prepare for the Lord, you get into prayer with God. And not only that, you have down, you, get, you build a relationship with God through prayer and praise to him. That you never miss a day, that you never miss a night, that you never miss you're always there before the Lord and you're singing praise to him in your heart while you're working, whatever you're doing. You're consumed with God because he's the only one that's going to save you out of this whole mess. Listen, we're coming into a time and I really believe that the Bible points directly to our generation as a generation that will go through the tribulation. A lot of people say you're not going through, you don't need to prepare yourself. I believe that's nothing but the ten virgins and half of them were asleep, half of them weren't ready and the other half were ready. Amen? There was, there was those that prepared and there was those that didn't prepare. We need to be a people that prepare. Amen? Everybody here, might, you might be preparing. You might be before the Lord. And spiritually, you're growing stronger every day. You're growing stronger every day. So when that time comes, that you'll sail right through it. That's what God wants. He wants you to be able to pray to him. You've got a relationship with him. Your, your lampstand is full of oil. And when hard times come and there is no food, that you can pray for food. And food appears. Because you know why? He told you that it would happen like that. He told you it would happen like that. It was in the Bible that food appeared. Why did Jesus do that? Why did he take the, three, the people three days out in the desert, three days out in the desert, no way to get back, and they didn't have any food? And yet he does a miracle to feed them. He wants to show you that he's able to do a miracle in your life, miracles in your life, amen? If he doesn't want you to die, I don't care what sickness and disease comes in the land that the Bible says in the last days will happen where two-thirds of the people die. You will not be the one that dies. Amen? You will not be the one that dies because you have a relationship with God Almighty. You have a relationship with God Almighty. But if you don't prepare right now, you won't be ready. You won't be ready. See, if the tribulation never comes in your lifetime, you still have to prepare and be ready for that day when you go home to the Lord. You cannot get on your deathbed and say, oh, I know I've been a little scoundrel, and I know, Lord, uh, please forgive me. I believe in you. Now, come on. Do we really believe that's going to work? Some people do. Some people actually believe that. They don't understand God. They don't understand God when you believe such a thing as that. But I want you to tell you something. There was a little boy, when Jesus fed the 4,000, there was a little boy that had some loaves and a few fish. He packed his lunch. He says, I'm going to the desert with Jesus, and I'm going to listen to him, but I better take something with me. Now, what do all the other people do? They didn't pack the lunch, did they? They just took off and went. But somebody prepared. And he says, did anybody prepare? He said, well, we got a little boy here. He's got some fish, and he's got some bread. He packed his lunch. Do you pack your lunch for school? Did your mom pack your lunch? Did you pack your lunch? Do you go to work and pack your lunch? I do it every morning. I pack my lunch the night before. I get ready for in the morning because I know in the morning I want to sleep until the last moment and then I got to go. Amen? So I get up and I do this, I do that, and I grab the stuff that I've already made. All life is is preparing for the next step. And we need to prepare for the steps before the Lord. Amen? We need to prepare for that. John the Baptist, it says, he prepared the way for Jesus. John the Baptist did. He was here and he preached about the one that comes after me whose shoes I'm not even, I'm not even worthy to unlatch and wash his feet because they got dirty on the rock. I'm not even worthy to do that. And he, he prepared the way of the Lord. 
So when Jesus come, things were in place and Jesus was able to pull the people to God. And that's what John the Baptist did, right? Well, we're doing the same thing. We're now an extension of John the Baptist, okay? We're an extension of John the Baptist. The disciples said this. They says, God, I know Elijah must come and Moses must come. I know Elijah must come first and then the coming back or then the end. And Jesus said this. He says, Elijah has already come. Elijah was John the Baptist. He already came. They had not a clue. Now, we are the John the Baptist. It's grown from one man to many. We are to prepare and make straight the coming of the Lord for many people and many people in their lives. We are to help not only to prepare ourselves, but to prepare others for the coming of the Lord, that they would be found worthy and without spot or wrinkle. Amen? God said there's a few in Sardis that haven't spotted their garments. This is what we're doing. We're trying to prepare people, amen? But I want you to see in your life, so many people, or in the lives of so many people, they're not really making preparation. And I think this is the time that we need to encourage people to prepare. Jesus says, the day of the Lord comes at the thief of the night. If the good man of the house would understood if the good man of the house would have understood that the thief was coming, he would have made ready and prepared himself. Amen? But he didn't know. He didn't know. And I really believe that what's being told today and the gospel that's being preached today or the good news, there's some of it that isn't making people really ready. It's not really making people ready. Jesus said, this generation shall not pass away. And we're just kind of like in the U.S., we're just not really making ourselves ready. And I think even worldwide, we see everything going off on in the Middle East. We see in that there's riots and, and there's people that are taken over and we're putting people in, in heads of state and, and that over in other countries. But we're really not understanding what's going on. And I think likewise, we're really not understanding what's going on spiritually, what God really wants in our life. And we need to make ourselves ready. Joe prepared himself. He understood God to some degree and he had patience. So he sailed through. We ever talk about the patience of Job. How did he ever get such patience? How did he ever understand who God was? Even though he did have some things wrong, Job was able to stand a great persecution. He lost his family in one day. He lost all his wealth in one day. He lost everything in one day. You can't say at that time, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get right before God. You know what Job did? He knew this. And this wasn't his first rodeo either. He knew this. It says when they told him, he fell down and worshiped God. He fell down to his knees and worshiped the Lord. That was his custom. It says every day he sacrificed to God. And he prayed to God because he was worried about the sins of his children. He could tell that they weren't right. He says whether they have cursed God in their heart, he was standing in there for them. So when Satan went to God and, and said all these things, actually God said, have you considered my servant Job? Satan says he'll deny you. And this is what God said. Through all the things that Job has gone through, he still holds his integrity. And this is what it's all about, people. You prepare yourself now. So when hard times come or harder times come, you stand with integrity. You stand and you don't deny God. You stand in knowing that your God reigns. You stand and worship before the Lord and let the glory of God come down. Let your life be victorious when everything is falling to your right and to your left. When people, there's a thousand at your left hand, there's 10,000 at your right hand that falls, but the plague does not come nigh you because you know how to worship God. You have prepared yourself. You have made yourself ready for any storm that comes your way. 
You are ready for miracles if miracles need to happen. You have prayed to God. You have walked with God. You have made yourself ready. But the time is coming, is said in the last days, that people won't make themselves ready, that they'll listen to other teachers that will not make them ready. And they'll believe that all is well. And this is what God says. I tell you this, when they say to you, peace and safety, all is well, he says, I'll tell you what's going to happen. All destruction will come. And he's talking to Israel. So can you listen to each person? Can you listen to this news broadcast or that news broadcast? And they say, oh, we're coming out of recession. We're coming out of this. We're coming out of that. But yet we see people still losing their jobs. And the jobs that do people get, they do get. It's $8 an hour jobs. It's not the $30 and $50 an hour job. It's not the union jobs. They're going off to the side. It's the other type of jobs. God wants us to make ready. Five loaves and two fishes. We need to be like the little boy that packed his lunch, amen. We need to be like the little boy that says, I will be getting hungry and I need to know. And I'll say this. I say this. If, if you're listening to this broadcast today and you're a person that has some money, this is what you need to do. You need, you need to buy gold and silver. Because the dollar is going to de deplete itself. And many currencies in, in uh, Europe and that are going to deplete also. You need to stabilize your money. And if you don't have money, this is what you're going to do. You're, not, you're going to go ahead and you're going to stand with the Lord and say, Lord, I don't have much money. And God says, you're just perfect for a miracle. Amen. See, you're going to come through anyway. Whether you, do, you have money or you don't have money. Money that God gives, uh, has given to people, they need to secure it because there's people that are going to need money. And, and, and God is, is making people ready. And there's a lot of people. I'll tell you what, you try to buy a gold coin made by the U.S. government right now, and you have a hard time finding it. Isn't that crazy? You would think they'd be all over, that you could buy them all over. You, you have a hard time finding them. And anybody that has them wants way over the price of what they're worth. What's going on? There's people getting ready. They know there's a fall coming. They know that there's a fall coming. Now you say, but I don't have the money for that. Then you'll have miracles. You'll have miracles. Okay? You win either way. But what God has given you and the ability that God has given you and the desire in your heart to know him, know him, know him, and spend time with the Lord because the time's coming. You have to bring all that in. You have to bring all that in and let it be used. And God wants to do that. And this is, this is just a time that I say this, make yourself ready. There's preachers out there that'll tell you it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. Jesus will take you home. I'm going to tell you what. It means everything. And a lot of people say, well, we're getting out of here with the rapture. I'm going to tell you something. I'll give you a little wisdom. In John 6, it tells us, and this is for the people on TV. John tell, Jesus told us in John 6 four times that the resurrection is on the last day. And Paul, all Paul said, he says, I show you a mystery. That the people that are alive, when Jesus comes back, they'll be caught up together with them. Why do I say this? Because there, there's tens of thousands, if not millions of people that believe this. That we're getting out of here and we don't need to make ourselves ready. We're getting out of here before the tribulation and we don't need to make ourselves ready. And it's a lie of Satan. This is what God wants. He wants you to make yourself ready. See, you don't need to know when the, when the rapture is. You need to know when the resurrection is. And it's on the last day. That's when, the, that's when the, the rapture's at. It's on the last day. So if you know that you're going to go through something, God never wants you blindsided. He wants you to know exactly what you're going to go through for the most part. He wants you to make yourself ready. And this is what I say. Make yourself ready with the Lord. Whether the tribulation comes or not in your lifetime, and I really believe it will. But if it doesn't, make yourself ready in the Lord. Many people are very complacent, and they are the virgins that have gone asleep. 
They are the virgins that have gone asleep. Don't be that virgin. Make yourself ready. Prayers will get you ready. James says, draw nigh to me. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. If, if you don't know Jesus Christ, this is your first thing you have to do. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to fall on your knees and say today, Jesus, you are my Lord and you are my Savior. I don't even know maybe what that means, but I will do what you want me to do. Please forgive me of my sins and make me alive in you. Come into my heart and show me what is to come and show me what is to come. Jesus is all about that. Think about how many times Jesus told P P Peter and the disciples what was going to happen to Jerusalem. They said, look at these buildings. And he says, I tell you, not one stone will be upon another one day. S uh, 50 years later, 60 years, no, 40 years later, 40 years later, Rome came in and demolished the whole city. 40 years later, Rome came in and took down the whole city. Jesus already knew that, and he was telling them, this is what's going to happen. So make yourself ready. It's a time of miracles, and it's time of the great outpouring of the Holy Spirit.